Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Doc Project 365, episode 1333. If you're following along on YouTube, please jump on over to thewilddoc.com. Check out all of our full length videos. That's where we house them. I have May here. She's going to help us out with this little sucker right here. This guy, it's not very often that I get to be next to like one of these models. I, I, we just don't have them in our office and whatnot. So when I saw this, I thought it would be a great, um, a great way to be able to give you guys a real and a structural view of what happens or a possible cause of how tight lateral neck muscles, tight lateral neck muscles, right, the muscles on the side, can lead to like some, some irritation of these nerves. Now this is called your brachial plexus. Take a quick look at that sucker, right? And I want you guys to see that we have muscles in the back and a couple muscles in the front and they weave out in between, right? Now these are called your scalene muscles, right? We have anterior, medial, posterior. That's not necessarily important. The point is, is that you can see how they kind of pinch. So imagine as these muscles shorten, what's gonna happen here is you're gonna end up in a position that looks like that. Now, bring May here right here. We have this shoulder right here. If I was to look at May, and what happens is as she starts to lean, I notice that there's a significant loss in lateral flexion. And then I go here and I feel the tone of the tissue and it's significantly increased, right? So I can assume then that we have some tight muscles here, maybe some inflama inflammatory changes that are making them a little swollen, right? And she's complaining about pain into her shoulder, even down into her elbow, or even down into her fingers. The harder or tighter the compression is, the more compromised there, compromise there is to the, the nerves, the tighter that they're squeezed, the farther that those, those symptoms will go distally, okay? So I thought it was just a really good example of being able to put one one type of like a, you know structure next to like a skeletal structure next to a real person to give you guys a really good example. So uh, with this, if we have this, this is a, why it's so important to not just assume that we have some type of discal type of injury, but rather to then address these soft tissues on the side, or even if we do have a disc injury, to still address these soft tissues on the side. That way we can loosen up right in here, create more space in between here, decompress any of these neural structures that are coming through and reduce any of the symptoms that can be going down the arm. So myofascial, really, really important. And this is kind of your anatomical view of how this looks. Hope this helps you guys out. Questions on this, comments on this, please post it below. Otherwise, May, thank you so, so much. We are here each and every day optimizing function to optimize performance. Thank <laughs> you.